Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and fill out that QR code and include everybody that's watching this morning, we would greatly appreciate that for sure. Or if you'd like to shoot us an email or something like that to let us know you're watching, you certainly can do that too. If you're home because you're not feeling well, uh, we certainly pray that you get to feeling better to get back here uh, worshiping with us for sure. Um, if you are uh, joining us for the first time or a regular online viewer, welcome back or great to have you. Uh, if there's anything that we can do to help you in your walk with the Lord, make sure you reach out and let us know exactly what that is that we could do. All right, let's get going with our opening song. make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud, clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
We continue with our confession and absolution. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has had mercy upon us, and has sent His Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you. Testament reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord, and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to, deep, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers. Kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because of the Lord who is faithful the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, the Son of God. 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. To you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So, of course, that is my title of the sermon this time, We Are His Witnesses, and really has been sort of the theme throughout our Easter season as we are reminded that we are indeed witnesses to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sure, we did not see Jesus personally, but he has been revealed to you and to me by the scriptures, that message that has been passed along uh, from the original witnesses that give us those gospel accounts. Well, that is given to you and to me, and that's what makes us witnesses to the resurrection, witnesses to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we indeed have good news. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So my service planning and theme selection for the Easter season has been 
eerily connected to the events happening personally and professionally in my life, if you are comfortable with me <laughs> talking about things this way. So for example, as I did my theme for this week, which I wrote in early February, flying from Kansas City to Detroit to Seattle to Portland, because that makes sense, right? Laugh out loud. <laughs> went, uh, went this way. This, was, this is what I wrote. The post-resurrection encounters with Jesus include being frightened, startled as if seeing a ghost. Coming to the realization that it is the Lord Jesus, these feelings become marked with joy excitement, and amazement. I imagine if we were at a funeral, for example, right? If we were attending a funeral and the body and the casket came back to life, we would have similar feelings <laughs> to that which was recorded by our gospel writers from the people that were around. And I imagine if we were at a funeral and the body and the casket did come back to life, we would we would have different reactions. I mean, I think <laughs> I, I think some people would run away in fear. Uh, family obviously would be overjoyed and overcome with tears of joy. Uh, no telling how everybody would react for sure. And perhaps maybe there wouldn't even be words in our language that could describe what we had just experienced. But then again, Eunice and I had an interesting conversation with someone that actually had come back from the dead two times, once in a car accident, and the second time, well, it was the pandemic and the coronavirus where he was intubated for 45 days, had these, uh, these um, end-of-life experiences. So we ran into Mike Pearson at Rendezvous Junction Brewery in Rogers, Arkansas, when we were going down there for Rachel Hawk's wedding, uh, when we were going to do that. So um, yeah, so it was kind of a really cool thing to hear his story. So I recommend the beer at, at, the, at Rendezvous Junction for sure, but I really recommend getting in a conversation with Mike, who's there at the brewery for sure. So let's take a look at how the gospel writers also uh, gave uh, indication of how their emotions and behaviors were when they saw the resurrected Jesus Christ. So in John chapter 20, and the similar account to the Luke gospel that we read today, St. John says this, On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. St. <laughs> Luke records that they were startled and frightened and thought that they saw a spirit when this happened. Well, and when you read that in light of St. John's Gospel, I would think the same thing, right? If you're in an upper room and the doors are locked and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody becomes part of your party standing there, well, of course you might be thinking that that's a ghost. I mean, after all, how can a body come through a wall? Well, we know that's because Jesus is true God and true man, and he's in his glorified state, so he can do that sort of thing. He can just walk through a wall. So, I don't know, maybe that gives us some indication of what the afterlife's going to be like. I don't know if we'll get to be able to walk through walls or not. We'll just have to wait and see and find out. But anyway, I think that we can all agree that this makes sense, their response to this particular event. Now, it is nice that we are given these emotional accounts for the first Christ followers, but they really serve to set up the next part. Now that they realize that Jesus is alive, what does that mean to be witnesses of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What does it mean to be Christ followers now in this world? And of course, Jesus doesn't leave them hanging on their next steps. He answers that for them. Then he opened their mind to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. That repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. St. John also expands upon this first encounter by saying, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you speak the truth in love, 
and repentance does not follow, then the sins of the unrepentant are not forgiven. See, this reminds us, right? This reminds us that we are in the forgiveness business. This is the whole purpose for the Lord's church, is to speak love, to speak truth, to call people to repentance and bring them back to following our God. That's our role. We're in the forgiveness business, and it has eternal consequences for sure. So this is why it's very important that we are Team Jesus, joyfully empowering others to be Christ followers. Most of the time in the church, we think of this as outreach or evangelism, because this was the main emphasis of the apostles at the time and when the scriptures were reported, right? They would be witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth, like we even talked about last Sunday uh, in that Acts 1 verse 8. And certainly that is what they did. We have the Acts of the Apostles that capture it nicely, that which they did. St. Paul and all of his missionary journeys and uh, the other apostles and their encounters with others as they spread the gospel and as it went on and on and on from Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth. But let's not forget the steps because those steps are still important for you and me today too. The road to Emmaus, what was the important part? Well, it was Jesus walking with those disciples, explaining the scriptures, explaining about Jesus, how he must do those things, and he did those things for you and for me. Our gospel account too. Jesus opened their minds to the scripture. St. John says the same thing too. And he is speaking about all of the gospel accounts. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and perhaps even the writings of St. Paul when he finally gets around to writing his gospel when he says these words. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So if we are going to be faithful to our calling as Christ followers, what's the most important thing? Absolutely, reading the scriptures, knowing our Bibles, because after all, it is the foundation that we need. It's the knowledge that we need, and it's also the encouragement and reminder that we need to be hearing on a daily basis. Now, we haven't run out of marbles yet, <laughs> but I'm glad to see that there are a few more marbles that are being put in there, so I'm glad that you're taking up that challenge and putting that marble in the cross for every single time that you read Mark. And again, we have a few more Sundays before we take that all down, but come on, seriously, help us lose our marbles as we dive into the Word of God. The pillar of sowing is also our bridge from knowing to going. Our pillar says Christ followers empower others to know their Savior and what it means to be his disciple by mentoring, teaching, and encouraging, no matter our stage or station in life. Christ followers cultivate the fields in which the Lord has planted us by sowing the word of God and shining the light of Jesus in all that we do, praying for those lost in our midst and loving others as Christ has loved us. Remember that as we focus in on that pillar. We are disciples by mentoring others, by teaching others, by encouraging others. And there are always other people in our life that we can be doing those things for, whether it's through a card, whether it's family devotions in our home, whether it's writing a little letter of encouragement to our grandchildren or something along the lines of that reminding them of God's great love for them in Christ Jesus. And sure, it's recognizing the areas in our life, right? Those turtles on a fence post that God is putting in our life, the opportunities for us to share the hope that's inside of us. And we also include praying, right? Praying for the lost, praying for those names on our top 10 list, those names of the people that we want to spend eternity with them and with Jesus for sure, as we are working towards the things, the things that are to come in this life. 
So speaking of the daily activities and behaviors of a Christ follower, Mike Pearson certainly does that with his life. In fact, he gets invited to speak about his experiences, obviously mostly at churches. And here's a picture of a book that he wrote. Uh, and you can see the catchy James thing where it says, you believe that there is one God, you do well, even the demons believe and tremble. Kind of an interesting Bible verse that he begins his book, or at least titles on his book, Beyond Belief, Revelations from Death's Shadow. <laughs> a pastor once asked Mike if he would be willing to come and give his story to his church. I laughed at his response because he said this, of course, it's the only reason why I'm still here. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Now, I, I had sampled a few birds for beers for sure uh, when Mike was telling this story, but man, that hit me like a splash of cold water in the face. Shouldn't that be our experience too, as witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus, that we are always willing to talk about him? I hope you don't need a near-death experience to realize this. And remember, even Martin Luther said, there is no other reason that we are still here on earth other than the fact that we are the Lord's instruments in bringing the gospel to those that are around us. We are Team Jesus, joyfully empowering others to be Christ's followers. And we know why this is important because this is absolutely how this is going to go down for each and every person that's alive on this earth. They are going to die, and then there is the judgment. Angel Studios recently put together an after-death documentary. Angel Studios is the one that, um, that, that created The Chosen. In case you are interesting, they do a documentary on the topic of near death experiences. This isn't just about people that have experienced it. Rather, it also embraces the skeptics or prior skeptics that had done a lot of research on this particular topic. And it, and it actually travels almost always back all even, even to the 60s of people that were actually involved with this sort of work. And so the research in this particular documentary comes from both the medical and the scientific points of view. And I think it's really, really well done. But disturbingly, <laughs> in this documentary, according to the film, 23% of near-death experiences, sometimes called NDEs, are not of heaven, but of actually of hell. One of the scariest moments in my life, says one man, quoted in that documentary. Now, I'm not trying to scare anyone, right? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And because Christ has been raised from the dead, we have no reason to worry about where we are going to be. Our place is in heaven. It is secure because we have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ and our sins have been taken care of and we are in a right standing with our God. We know that we have heaven for sure and nobody can take that away from you and for me. And the other reason to bring this up though is, is to comfort you. Comfort you because if you were to watch this video, boy, it gives you a really powerful perspective on where our loved ones are with the Lord, surrounded by his love, surrounded by his light, surrounded by his presence. And that for sure is something to be comforted by for sure. And in fact, I think that they would not be very happy, <laughs> as highlighted in the movie too, that if one of them had to actually come back to this veil of tears that we live in. So I encourage you, let's be like St. Paul, right? For us to live means fruitful labor for you and for me in this life. But death indeed is gain, because we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. And now may this peace, which surpasses our human understanding, guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus 
until life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts He has blessed us with and entrusted to us for His kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Our announcements for this Sunday include, do you have a new address, phone number, or email? Please let the office know by today, April 28th, so we can update our member directory. Be on the lookout in the next few weeks for a new member directory to be published. Our new member classes will start this Tuesday, April 30th at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. There's still plenty of time to join in, so please let the office or pastor know, and we will get you the Zoom link. Vacation Bible School is going under the sea this year with SCUBA. VBS will take place June 23rd through the 27th. Registration for both kids and adults is now open. Be sure to register today. Finally, don't forget that the Engaging Moms webinar will take place this Wednesday, May 1st, on Right Now Media. If you don't have a Right Now Media account, please contact the office and we can help you. Those are our announcements. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning in our prayers, we want to remember Russ. This is a friend of Jim Scarrell's with heart failure issues. Uh, also, prayers for Riley. This is Trish Park's granddaughter that's having some blood sugar issues and is going to be needing to take insulin. Prayers for Brian Yonke's mother with a torn labrum. Prayers for Betty. This is a friend of Audrey Lammers that is back in the hospital. And a prayers of Thanksgiving for Brody Larson as uh, he's been experiencing some positive uh, health issues. So we give thanks for that. Also prayers for uh, Ann Karen Brock and her family. Tony did pass away this past Wednesday. Uh, funeral arrangements are being uh, made as we speak. Uh, but again, we just wanted to uh, keep the Karen Brock family in our prayers, especially uh, Ann and daughter Paula. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the faithful witnesses of the resurrection. Through their witness and testimony, you have empowered your church to proclaim the good news of Jesus. Empower us to be bold witnesses by embracing our ministry clarity plan so that many more are added to your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in baptism you have joined us to the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and made us citizens of your kingdom. So we celebrate with those that are remembering baptismal birthdays this week, including Wren, Chris, Jacob, Matt, 
Gary, Solomon, Larry, Dominic, and Jeffrey move our hearts to repentance so that we would set our mind on things above and be directed by your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. We rejoice with Bill and Crystal as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. And Lord, we ask that you be the companion of those who live alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Grant that all in authority would govern according to your will, maintaining order and curbing evil, that we may live in peace. Watch over those who serve and protect us. Bless all of our medical responders and institutions that provide care and healing for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous Lord, you have seated Christ at your right, right hand for our deliverance. Remember those afflicted with illness and injury, including Russ, Riley, Brian's mom, Betty, Brody. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Sustain and comfort those who are mourning the death of loved ones, including the Karen Brock family. Comfort them with the peace that only you can bring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen. Amen.